Hi, this is part one of a two-part video showing how to get to the oil pump chain adjustment bolt on an M62TU. It's on a 2004 Range Rover M62 4.4 HSE model. And these are the tools that you pretty much need. This is the tools that I used. Uh, some folks on rangerovers.net forums uh, recommended these uh, this tool right here. So I'm going to go over the process I used uh, to get to it. You do have to take the lower timing cover off. This method, you don't have to drop the upper oil pan. You can do it entirely from the front. But you will need some special tools. So first and foremost, the bolts that you're trying to get to, you only need to remove this bolt. And this is right behind the sprocket for the oil pump, and it uses a 13 millimeter hex head. Now you're gonna have to use a quarter inch ratchet, and I'm using a gear wrench ratchet. It has a flexible head, and I bought this specifically for this job. So you can see here I've got a 13 millimeter. Uh, I'm using an impact uh, socket on there. It's a short one quarter inch and uh, the gear wrench uh, model for this is 81012F and it says right there quarter inch flex ratchet. That cost about 20 bucks you can pick it up off Amazon but you need this because this bolt is up in there at an angle and without having that flex head the shaft of this ratchet would impact, would hit up against uh, either the lip of the upper oil pan, which is a gasket surface and you don't want to damage that, or against the other engine parts over here that surround the crankshaft and hold the, uh, the timing chain U-guide. So you'll need to get this up in there, of course get on your off position, and then slowly apply torque to get that bolt loose. It's a normal righty tighty lefty loosey. So what I did is I grabbed my hand, I cupped the gasket surface so that if this slipped and hit it would hit my hand and not the gasket surface and I eventually worked this off. Now the benefit of using this gear wrench tool if you can see there it says 84 tooth. Compared to my Craftsman quarter inch ratchet, the ratchet teeth are much wider on that and they're much finer on this so if you take a listen the teeth are very very fine and with that number of teeth it really gives you many different points at which it'll ratchet to and you can click on my craftsman there's only one tooth that separates the entire travel that I can get in the position to get this bolt off so that's the reason why I'd recommend this specific gear wrench, quarter inch flex ratchet. So that's the first step. You take this bolt off, and once you get it off, oh, before I move on, if you loosen this completely, it will be so far protruding down into the oil sump that you won't be able to remove this ratchet out of the way because it'll be impacting at the bottom of the oil pump. So what I had to do is, I actually loosened this all the way, realized I couldn't remove the bolt or this, tightened it back just a little bit so I could get this out, and then I got a 13 millimeter combination wrench, or, or I may have just stuck the socket in there and, and worked it out by hand the, the rest of the way. Uh, so be cognizant of that. So once you get that bolt out, the next step is a lot of fun. <clears throat> Inside, what this bolt threads into, it threads into a hollow nut, which is an adjuster. And there's another video uh, on YouTube uh, describing that, showing its location. And at the end of this video, I'll show you on the car uh, what it looks like to do this adjustment. But inside of that, inside of that adjuster, what this threads into, there is actually a female eight millimeter hex opening. And you need to get, you need to get an Allen wrench in there. 
but there's no Allen wrench that I'm aware of on the planet that will fit in there and that has that's short enough to give you the clearance to clear the bottom of the oil sump. So what I had to do is I took one of my nice craftsman bits. It's an eight millimeter and I cut it short. And the length that you really want to use, let's measure this here. This worked for me and it's just under two and a half inches. I actually would have preferred it to be a little shorter, maybe 2.25 inches, or maybe even two inches would do. Uh, but you want to cut this down. I'd say 2.25 inches should be safe. Two to 2.5 inches should be safe. You want to cut it down to that size. Make sure the edge is uh, sharp enough that you can still get a wrench around it. And then with this bolt removed, get this up and slide it in there and wiggle it around until you get it fully seated. Once it's fully seated in that adjuster, I used an eight millimeter combination wrench. I couldn't even use the box end, it's that tight. I had to use the open end. And through the chain, uh, with your hand against the sprocket, like that, you're gonna have to grip it and hold it up in there. And then, from the opposite side of the chain, get your little combination wrench on there and rotate clockwise. But you're not gonna get much movement, so you're gonna have to remove it up, flip it around, and then hope you get lucky and you get the next, uh, next side. It took my 168,000 mile M62 about three turns to get it to approximately within spec. You want about 10 millimeters of deflection. I still need to measure it. I might even purchase a tool if it's not too expensive to do an actual chain deflection measurement, but uh, that's the process uh, that I used. Is it the best? Is it the book procedure? Probably not. Uh, most uh, BMW um, engine guides will, will tell you to drop the upper oil pan, but on the I'm on the TU, on the Range Rover, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, the uh, front axle goes through part of the uh, oil pan, or it's in the way. Uh, and I'm doing this job in my, my driveway. I didn't take it to the shop to do it. So uh, I hope this helps someone. And again, um, the second part of this video, if I splice it together, I'll show you how to get this, uh, how to get, fit these tools in the engine and do the job. But once again, Gear wrench, flex ratchet, quarter inch with 82, 84 teeth, 13 millimeter short socket to remove this, and it's a normal righty tighty lefty loosey. And then two inches long to 2.25 inches long, eight millimeter hex wrench. Cut it nice and short. Once you remove the bolt, slide it up in there and use an eight millimeter combination wrench to tighten it by turning it clockwise. Hope that helps someone. And again, a couple seconds here, you'll see what it is like in action. All right, as promised, this is a, a demonstration of uh, what the oil pump chain tension procedure is like on the car. So here you have your flex head ratchet and basically with your 13 millimeter uh, socket you get in here and uh, it's a little difficult to see but the bolt is right there and you would you would need to flex that ratchet up in a position like that set it on the bolt in there and then that's the amount of travel that you have and underneath this uh, crankshaft pulley you would just hold your hand under here to protect the gasket surface while you remove the bolt. Before you thread it out all the way, while you can still get your ratchet out, you would then either take your hand or the socket by itself and work that bolt out the rest of the way by hand. And when you remove it, it'll come out like that. Once you remove the bolt, then is the tensioning procedure. All right, once you've gotten the bolt out, you would take your cut Allen key, eight millimeter, and your eight millimeter spanner combination wrench, 
and you would just very carefully insert this Allen key into that hole. You gotta work on getting it in there. This thing wants to focus. Just trying to get it to focus. There we go. And it takes a little bit to get it situated. Oh, there we go. It's going in. And now you gotta, with your fingers, kind of wiggle it back and forth until you get it set. And there it is. It's fully set. Now I'm gonna hold. I'm holding the bottom of that up right now. If I don't, it will fall out. So really, with one of your fingers or two, reach around through the uh, chain opening and hold the side shaft of that Allen, Allen key. And while you're doing that, you might be able to see the tip of that protruding right there. Yeah, you can see the tip of it protruding right down there. And from the opposite side of the chain, you would put your spanner back here. You would grip that like so. Let's go this way. And then you would go in a clockwise fashion and push and tighten it. Let me zoom out and show you what you're working with. We're on to the right side for a second. Yeah, right side, right over the crankshaft. Yeah, right there you can see how little clearance you have. It actually, you can actually pivot this clockwise and this box and wrench of the, uh, this box end of the wrench will actually clear inside of there for a little bit and it'll give you some, uh, it'll give you some travel. I've already adjusted my tension, uh, but if you wanted to loosen it, I'm holding the rent, the uh, Allen key with my left finger, and I'm just uh, pulling on that. It's loosening now. And now if I wanted to tighten it, I would uh, just push on that, and it's tightening right now. So you get the chain nice and tight. When you're done, put, pull that out of there. Come back to the left side for a second. Very good. And then uh, I'm gripping that kind of like a cigarette. And just de delicately pull it out. You can see how little clearance there is here. A full size eight millimeter Allen key would definitely not fit, but that will fit in there. And if we come out, you can see the style of oil pan that this M62 TU uses and because the axle is running down they're basically either going through or directly under the oil pan it's not possible to drop this pan to do the job some other procedures will tell you that there are two other nuts on the oil pump one here and one directly parallel behind it that you need to loosen you don't need to loosen that to tighten the chain you just need to take that one bolt out put the 8 millimeter allen key in there and tighten it clockwise I can't tell you how loose this was before I did it, and now it looks like that. Still have yet to measure it, but I'm pretty sure that's probably within spec for 10 millimeter deflection right there. Anyways, that's all. Hope it helps someone.